Getting started with video editing can feel overwhelming, but don't worry. This video will teach you the essentials of Adobe Premiere Pro in just 15 minutes. By the end of this tutorial, you will know how to navigate the software, edit clips, add text, apply effects, and export your final video. Let's open up Premiere. Number 1. Creating a new project. Once you've opened up Premiere, you will see the start screen. Right here you can see my projects I've worked on previously, but now to create a new project, click the new project button. In this window, give your project a name. For example, my first edit. Then you can select the location where your project will be saved. You can also choose a template, but that's for another video. I highly suggest you check the skip import mode option because the import window is not very useful. Then click on create. And there we have it, Adobe Premiere Pro. Number two, understanding the workspace. Now that we're inside Premiere Pro, let's take a look at the interface. Everything is organized into panels, each serving a specific function. The first panel we'll take a look at is the project panel. This is where you put all your media files, such as video clips, audio files, images, and more. Right here, you can see the toolbar with all the tools needed to edit your video. Next to the toolbar, you will find the timeline. This is where we're gonna assemble the video. Video. We can't see anything in here yet, but that will change in a second. Besides that, you see the source panel and the program monitor, which you will also understand soon. Now, all these panels can be dragged around however you prefer them. You can even drag panels to a second monitor. That's what I do when I'm editing. I usually have my timeline on a white screen and in the program monitor on the 69 screen. However, if you mess up your workspace, for example, accidentally close the timeline, you can fix that by going to the window menu on top and find workspaces. Then click on reset to saved layout. This will bring everything back to its default view. In the same workspaces menu, you can also save a workspace you created. And you'll find it back in the list, of course. Number three, it's time to import some footage. Well, there are a few ways you can do this. You can drag and drop your video files straight into the project like this. You can then organize them by clicking the folder button and then naming it footage, for example. Then of course you can drag the footage into that folder to stay organized. By the way, if you want to change your view, you can always do that by toggling between the buttons on the bottom left. 4. Creating a sequence. To create a sequence, all you need to do is drag your footage from the project panel into the timeline. That will automatically create a sequence for you. You will now see that sequence into the project panel as well. Now, this sequence has the exact same properties as the video you dropped in, which in my case is 4K 60 frames per second. But what if you want a 1080p sequence. Well, luckily, you can also create a custom sequence by clicking the new item button in the project panel. Then simply click on new sequence. In the next window, you can choose your own properties for your sequence. You can select one of the presets, and if you want, you can adjust the settings even more in the settings tab. For example, change the frame rate. Don't forget to give your sequence a name. I'll call mine my edit. Then click on OK. And as you can see, I now have a second sequence right here. You can close up the previous one if you'd like, and you can delete the old sequence from the project panel if you want. Now you can drag in footage from your project panel into the new sequence. As you can see, you'll get this pop-up. It will ask you to change the settings of your sequence to the same settings as the clip you're trying to import. In most cases, click keep existing settings. It will only ask it once, so you can go ahead and put all your clips into the timeline. By the way, you can easily zoom in in the timeline to make your clips more visible. Number 5. Let's do some basic editing. Alright, so to play back your videos, simply hit the space bar. You can now see your video in the timeline playing back in the program monitor. But what is this source monitor doing here? Well, this actually shows you the select clip in the project window. That way you can use it to preview your clips before putting it in the timeline. To preview a clip, simply double click the clip in your project panel to show it in the source monitor. Keep in mind, this does not have anything to do with the timeline or the program monitor. But now, what else can you do with the source panel. You can use it to import your video into the timeline. Just click and drag the video and drop it in the timeline. If it has audio, it will drag that into the timeline too. Now, you just drop the entire video into the timeline. But what if you only want a part of it? Well, then you can make a selection in the source panel. To do that, navigate to the point where you want to start. Then hit the I key on your keyboard. This stands for in. Now go to the moment where you want the clip to end. Then hit the O key, which stands for out. If you now 
click and drag the clip to the timeline, it will only add the selection you just created. This is super useful. Number six, editing basics with the toolbar and the timeline. This right here is the toolbar and these tools are used to trim, cut, speed up or slow down your clips. We're not going to learn all these tools today, but I'll show you the essentials. This is the selection tool, which you can use to select clips and drag them to another location. This tool is also being used to trim your clips. This means making them shorter or longer. By the way, you can also put clips on top of each other. You see, these are all video tracks on top of each other. If you put a video on top of another one, you can see what's underneath. It's kind of like having a paper and putting something on top of it. You can see what's underneath. You understand? Under the video tracks, which are tagged with V1, V2 and so on, you will see the audio tracks. This is obviously where all the audio will come. More about that later. By the way, you can always click and drag these tracks to make them bigger or smaller. But now let's move on to the next tool, the razor tool. This is used to add cuts to your clip. That way you can separate them from each other. You don't really need this tool if you know the default shortcut, which is Ctrl plus K. That way you can add cuts to your clips without switching to the razor tool all the time. Now there's something every video editor needs and that's a good stock library. Stock footage is used to enhance the story you're telling with your video. Luckily, stock Storyblocks, the sponsor of today's video, has a plugin for Premiere Pro that allows you to search and download any type of footage without leaving Premiere. Just click the download button and boom, it will appear in your project panel. You can then drag it into the timeline and there you go, no distractions. Storyblocks' curated stock library has everything you need to create high quality video in one place. With over a million 4K and HD footage, templates, music, sound effects, images and more, you can download unlimited high quality assets for just one predictable subscription cost. You do not have to pay for your clips individually. Now just imagine crashing your drone when you're trying to capture beautiful drone shots. Yeah, in that case, you should have used Storyblocks. You can also enhance your social media videos by accessing exclusive Storyblocks labeled music tracks directly in TikTok, Instagram, Facebook and YouTube. At the meantime, Storyblocks will keep you protected from copyright strikes, claims and all of that. And that way you can focus on what actually matters and that's creating and editing videos. Besides that, you can save hours with pre-made motion graphic templates for After Effects, Premiere Pro, Apple Motion and DaVinci Resolve. To get started with unlimited stock media downloads at one set price, head over to starblocks.com slash Premiere Basics or, or just click the link down below. It's time for number seven, speeding up and slowing down your clips. There are a few ways you can do this. The first one is the rate stretch tool. If this tool is selected, you can speed up your clips by grabbing them and making them shorter. This will not remove anything from your video. It will just make it play back faster. You can also drag them longer and that will make them play back slower. This can be used when you want to turn a clip into slow motion. Another way to do this is to right click your clip in the timeline and choose speed and duration. This will open up a small window where you can set the speed percentage of your clip. The higher the percentage, the faster the clip will play back. You can also check the reverse feature, which will of course reverse your video. Super, super awesome. Number eight, adding text. Now to add some text on top of your video, make sure the properties panel is opened up. You can do that by going to the window menu on top and then find properties. In this panel, you can customize your text. Now to create text, click the text tool in the toolbar, then go to the program monitor and simply click. This will allow you to type in whatever you want. When you're done, hit escape on your keyboard to stop typing. Then click the selection tool again and this will allow you to resize and reposition your text layer to your liking. In the timeline, you can now see a graphic layer which appeared when you were creating your text. This is where your text layer's in. Now let's start customizing it. To do that, make sure your graphic layer is selected. Then go to the properties panel we opened up earlier. And here, you can do a lot. Let me show you the basics. First, you want to select your text in the graphics layer. Then below, you will find all the customization options. You can choose another font if you'd like, but you can also choose some basic text formatting. If you scroll down even more, you can choose the color of your text, or even add a stroke, background or shadow, whatever you like. And now it's time for number nine, animating. So you probably wondered how you can create this logo flying into your video. Let me show you. To do that, you want to make sure your image is selected in the timeline. Then head over to the effect controls panel. This panel is where you can adjust the position, scale, rotation and more of your selected clip in the timeline. So everything I'm going to do in this panel now will be applied to the Premiere logo. 
Again, if you don't see the effect controls, head over to the window menu on top and you'll find it back right there. To create an animation, you need to understand these properties first. The position property allows you to adjust the vertical and horizontal position of your selected clip. All you need to do is click and drag the property to the right to increase it. If you drag it to the left, you will decrease it. You can also double click and type in a custom value yourself. And if you messed up, there's always the reset button. The scale will allow you to make your clip smaller or bigger. The rotation will rotate your clip. I suggest you play around with these properties, but now I'm going to show you how to animate them. Basically, whenever there's this little stopwatch icon in front of a property, you can animate it. To demonstrate, we're going to create this simple slide animation. First, grab the playhead and move it to the beginning of your clip. Then adjust the position property to the spot where you want your animation to start. I want it to start on the left side of my screen. Now, before we animate it, we need to register the position by clicking the stopwatch icon. As you can see, this created a little keyframe. This keyframe holds the information or data of your position property. Next, you want to grab the playhead and move it towards the end of the clip. Now, adjust the position again to the spot where you want the animation to end. This will automatically create another keyframe. Now the position will change in between those two keyframes. And yes, you created your first animation. Next, in step 10, I want to show you some video effects. You will find all the effects back in the effects library under video effects. Of course, I'm not going to show you them all, but definitely play around with them. All right, I'll show you one. This is the Gaussian blur effect. To add it to one of your videos, simply click it and drag it on one of your clips in the timeline. Then the Gaussian blur effect is applied to that clip, but you don't see anything. Let me help you. Remember the effect controls from before? Well, if you select your clip in the timeline, you will see that Gaussian blur effect right there in the effect controls. Remember, it's only applied to the clip you dragged it to. Let's take a look at the effect. Right here, you can see a blurriness property. You can increase this just like you did with the position properties. Only now, the higher you increase this value, the more blur you will introduce to your video. And the best thing is, this property can be animated as well, just like the position property. This will allow you to make a video blurry gradually from 0 to 100. Awesome, right? Next, I want to show you transitions. In the effects library, you will also find transitions. All you need to do to apply them is drag one of them in between the two clips in the timeline. That's all you need to do. These are presets that Adobe made for you guys. If you want, you can click and drag the sides of the transition to make them play longer or faster. Besides that, you can further tweak the transition in the effect controls. Now, you can also create create custom transitions and I'll pin a video in the top right corner for you guys right here. Now besides all that, you can also add basic fade transitions to your videos by selecting the left or the right side of a clip and then hitting Ctrl plus D on your keyboard. This will fade in your clips like this. Of course you can also drag the transition to make them longer or shorter. Isn't that beautiful? The last one audio. This one is really important. Let's make the video tracks a little smaller and the audio tracks a little bigger so we can see them. Now adding audio to the timeline works the same as adding a video. You just drag it from the project panel straight into the timeline on a audio track. Trimming works the exact same way. Let's use this song as an example. The only problem is it's a little bit too loud. To fix that, find this line on your clip. This is a volume fader which you can click and drag. If you drag it down, the music will play softer. If you drag it up, the music will play louder. It's that simple. You can also fade your music in and out by selecting your clips and hitting Shift plus D, just like we did with the transitions. This will gradually make your music play louder and you can drag it longer or shorter to match your video. is amazing. All right, now your beautiful work is done, which means you gotta save it. To do that, go to the export window on the top left. In here, give your export a name. Under the location settings, choose where you want Premiere to save your final video. Then for the preset, I usually choose YouTube 4K because this is perfectly optimized to export your videos for YouTube. If you want your export to have the exact same settings as your sequence, go to the video tab and click on match source. That will do the trick. Before you click on export, make sure that the entire source is selected. That way Premiere will export your entire timeline. And there you go, click on export and wait until Premiere is done creating your video. So now you know the absolute basics of Premiere Pro and you can get started with creating your first videos. If you want a cool exercise with some awesome effects, click the video right here on my left.
Thank you guys so much for watching.